The wonderful thing about being a human is that we have neuroplasticity. So the things that have been kind of hardwired into our brains when it comes to drinking, um, with the work that you're doing with Project 90, it kind of gets a chance, it gives our brain a chance to get another sort of uh, if you would say a, a new pathway, a new highway, you know, if you have been d- doing this with alcohol for a long time, I did it for many, many years. I'm 50 years old now. And, and uh, my maladaptive drinking started when I was about 30. So, you know, I had created these habits in my brain, these associations, right? Between, oh, end of the day, wine, stress, wine, celebration, wine. So my brain recognized that as its reality. And there was a time where I thought, gosh, I'm never going to be able to undo this. But because we are, oh, hi, James. (laughs) Because we are gifted with, with neuroplasticity, we do have the opportunity to undo the things that our brain has learned over time. And with positive reinforcement, the community that we have here in Project 90, the coaching calls where you learn what is going on, what is alcohol, what has it done to the way that I think about things. With practice, you actually can rewire your brain so that it makes new associations. I was talking to some girls the other day, some ladies whom I'm whom I'm working with, and I said, I never thought that I would have the same reaction to a seltzer water that I used to have about opening a bottle of wine. But it does happen. So when I come home now after a long day, I go into my mini bar, which is now filled with all sorts of wonderful, flavorful drinks that don't contain alcohol. And I have that same anticipation, that same excitement that I used to have around alcohol. It's really weird, but that is the stuff that makes the long lasting change so that when I walk into my house, I don't even think about alcohol. Now, if you would have told me that five years ago, I would have laughed at you because I thought that alcohol was a necessary part of my day. It was a hardwired part of my ritual at the end of the day. And so that's why it's it's great to be a part of, I'm so glad, first of all, that you all are here because this is a big step to come on here and say, let me get curious about this instead of staying in judgment. Because if you're anything like me, you had some judgment around your habits with alcohol because unfortunately alcohol leads us to do things and think things and say things and behave in ways that are not authentic. They are not who we really are. So kudos to you for getting on this webinar and just being curious and saying, you know, let me find out about this. Let me see what's going on. Here's the thing about alcohol, you guys. It is a highly addictive substance. It is marketed beautifully. It is um, sold to us as something that we need. And I'm not an evangelistic person. I'm not here to evangelize about alcohol, but I am here to educate you about what it really is. You know, I have a science background. I've studied this extensively because when I was hooked on alcohol and thinking it was so necessary, yet suffering these consequences in my life, I thought, am I that stupid? Am I crazy? So I had to get to the bottom of this. Here's the thing. Alcohol is highly addictive. It causes more deaths per year than cocaine and opioids combined. And yet it's the only drug that we have to justify not using. So once you can sort of look at alcohol for what it is, which is an addictive substance, if you use it enough, often enough, especially under the right circumstances, such as stress, anxiety, uh, trying to alter your mood, trying to get comfortable in a social situation, you're going to become dependent on it. Uh, But once you can remove the emotion from that and just look at it for what it is and say, oh, well, that's an addictive substance. I used it long enough and now I'm having trouble 
cutting it out of my life. Once you look at it as, as just an observation, hmm, yeah, that's what it is. Yep, it had that effect. It got my brain wired to believe I need it. Then we can take the shame and the emotion and the guilt out of it. And we can just go, okay, what do I want to do about it? And that's where the choices come in. So let's talk about cravings. Are they real? Absolutely. They are absolutely real. I'd like to take just a second, if you guys can share any any thoughts that you have about cravings. When do they come up? Um, you know, is it um, at the end of a busy day? Is it uh, when you've had maybe a little bit of a conflict with someone in your family or a friend or someone at work? What goes on for you guys when you think, hmm, I could really use a drink? You know, for me, um, even now being alcohol free for several years, I can go through my day. And I will say one thing when alcohol is no longer part of your life, uh, things get a lot less dramatic. Um, There's not the um, high level of drama a lot of times because, again, it takes us from being uh, reactive where we may um, just kind of speak out or say something that we may regret later to being more responsive where we go, okay, let me just take a pause Let me think about what just happened. And then I will have a intentional response. That happens because our levels of cortisol normalize. um, Our stress response becomes less intense, but it's still life, right? We still have things that happen in life. One thing that I've really observed is I can go through my day and I'll say something might get on my nerves. I might be irritated, even angry. And I'll think to myself, you know, back when I was drinking, this was totally a situation that would have kind of flipped that switch in my brain to say, it's time for a drink. So those were my experiences with cravings. Also, going to social events. I'm actually a rather introverted person. I call myself an extroverted introvert. Can any of you guys relate to that? I do enjoy being with people. However, if I go into an unfamiliar situation, it can be a little uncomfortable. So I would associate the need to loosen up with alcohol. Now, over time, you can redo those patterns that you can undo the ones that are there, the the thought patterns, and change them. And Look at it, again, without judgment, just from an objective viewpoint, and kind of come up with new ways to make yourself comfortable in situations that maybe you used alcohol for in the past. Kyle says he thinks about alcohol after the physical activity of yard work. Yes, I can understand why. Well, let's think about that. After doing physical activity in the yard, if you're in... Colorado, you're finally getting out there and getting to do things. Well, the sunshine, this is like, hmm, wow, happy. I feel happy. I'm outside. It's not so cold anymore. You feel a little, a little jubilant. Uh, Then you're doing, you're doing work. You're pulling things, you're clipping things, all that stuff. And a couple of things happen. You may be physically fatigued. You may be a bit dehydrated. So your body is saying, hello, I'm thirsty. Well, what's the natural thing to do? Get a drink. However, if you have made those connections in your brain over time that, oh, I've done this hard work and now I'm going to reward myself with a drink instead of a nice tall glass of water, which is what our bodies really, really need. Um. It's only natural that when you go into the house, if you have associated yard work with drinking, that that is going to trigger you to want to drink alcohol. And again, look at all of the environmental uh, stimuli that we have, right? When you're going through, when you see a beautiful day and people are outside, perhaps they're on a 
restaurant patio bar and they're drinking and you look at the commercials and people, there's a beer commercial and you see a guy and maybe he's doing yard work. And what's he do when he goes in? (sighs) He's hot. He's sweaty. He's going to reward himself and he cracks open a bottle of beer. It's cold. It's bubbly. It's refreshing. What they don't show you is what things look like an hour or two after that. Because if you're here at this webinar, my guess is it doesn't stop with that one beer or that one glass of wine. It didn't for me. And had somebody walked by, I'm sorry, the weather's changing here. (laughs) It's cloudy. It's uh, dimming my light. Um, If someone had seen me a few years ago on a beautiful spring day on a patio, and saw me with a very classy glass of wine, they may have had the same, the same association, like, oh, wow, look at her. She's having a great time. But guys, let's play it forward a little bit. What's it look like an hour later, two hours later, the next day? Well, if it looked good, we wouldn't be having this webinar, right? If it looked like the commercials, if it looked like what you see when you walk by a patio, a patio bar, and people are laughing and clinking their glasses, if that's where it stopped, we wouldn't do the job that we do, and you guys wouldn't be taking a valuable hour of your day to talk about this and listen. Like I said before, over time, And that's why James and I are so passionate about what we do with Project 90. With 90 days of number one, being alcohol free, eliminating alcohol from your daily routine, your body is going to begin to return to homeostasis. What is homeostasis? Homeostasis is a wonderful gift that human beings possess. We have the ability to regulate our own body. We have the ability to regulate our heart rate, our blood pressure, our cortisol level, dopamine, serotonin. Dopamine and serotonin are those feel-good things. Those are the things that are increased during those first couple of drinks. Think about those first couple of drinks. They work, Okay, I'm not going to lie. If if alcohol didn't do what it promises to do for the first 20 or 30 minutes, no one would drink it. If it took us straight to where it takes us after two hours or 12 hours later when we wake up with that, ugh, that nasty taste in our mouth and maybe our heart is racing, our mouth is dry, we're wondering, oh gosh, I drank too much again. If it took us straight there, no one would drink it. But it does deliver on its promise for 20 minutes. And why is that? It's because dopamine, serotonin levels, they go up like this. The problem is after 20 or 30 minutes, they start to go like this. And they don't just go down to what might be a normal like off day where you feel a little eh. They don't go there. They go there. And then we keep trying to get back up to that artificial level of dopamine and serotonin. We can't get back to it. And the dips keep going deeper. And that's why, that's why our brain keeps chasing it. With 90 days in Project 90, you give your body and your brain a chance to return to that homeostasis. And I'll tell you something, homeostasis is a really good feeling. It's just waking up and saying, I feel like me. And that doesn't have to be perfect. That doesn't have to be happy all the time. You may have days that are a little off, but it's you. It's authentic. And it also gives you the clarity because brain alcohol clouds our thinking. It muddles our brain. 90 days of no alcohol, you will gain so much clarity around your life. You'll return to who you really are, what really matters to you. And we do that in our program through the group calls. 
Um, we have an amazing community. You know, we talk a lot with professionals, people who are operating at a pretty high level. Oftentimes, people wouldn't even realize that they were perhaps struggling with this, this issue. Because on the outside, things look good. You know, my life looked fine. I'm a mother of four. I'm educated. I'm a professional. I carry myself well. No one knew that I was really struggling with this. I just couldn't get that one thing under control. Everything else looked okay. And that held me back for a long time. Can you guys relate to that? You think, well, it's not that bad. But here's the interesting thing. I was coaching the other day and one of our members said, you know, he's he's a gentleman. He's in his 50s, very successful, wonderful family who loves him, has a great career, dreams for the future. And he said, you know, I've been operating. I've done all of this at about a, operating on like a six. And now I feel, and he's only about 30 some days into our, into our program. He says, but you know, now it's only 30 some days and I feel like an eight. And he says, imagine what I can do now and imagine what I can do after 90 days. So, you know, sometimes giving up alcohol can feel like such a big thing, but I can promise you that as you go through this, The clarity that you gain and the perspective that you gain helps you understand that, yeah, it can be a little tough to put down in the beginning, but in exchange for for going through that little bit of struggle, you have everything else open up to you. You have renewed energy, better sleep. You have opportunities present themselves that you could have maybe never imagined. It's kind of crazy. I will tell you that when I finally stopped all the negotiating about, should I drink today? Should I not? Well, I'm just going to have two. Well, no, it's only, I wasn't going to drink till Friday, but it's Thursday and I've done really well. And when I stopped all of that, the world kind of just exploded. Everything became so much more possible. Well, Was that a coincidence? No, it's not. It's because my brain, my body returned to homeostasis. My brain had normal levels of dopamine and serotonin. My cortisol, my stress response was lessened. So I was able to go, I was able to look at things with such clarity. And I had so much mental energy remaining because I had taken out all of that negotiating that craving that you have that association with yard work equals alcohol. Good. I'm so glad it's helpful. This is a place you all where, you know, you can be very, very honest. There is no, you know, (laughs) I can probably promise that um, if you've had a thought around alcohol, I've probably had it or I have coached someone around it. So this is a place to be really honest. You know, um, like I said, we're both taking time out of our day to discuss this. I discuss it because it's a passion now, because I remember being in that place of having those cravings and thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through this? It does change. And it's not just because I keep telling myself every day that I can't drink. I can drink. I have a store four blocks from me that has rows and rows of alcohol and I can drink. I choose not to in a very, very happy, happy way because I know that if I drink, I am going to, well, I don't even know if I would feel good in the first 20 minutes anymore, but I know how it's going to go. I'm going to get drowsy. I'm going to feel cranky. I'm probably going to eat some crappy food. Um, That's the other thing. Weight loss. Oh my gosh. You know, I had breast cancer. I had a full hysterectomy that put me in menopause. That's the time where women have such a hard time with their weight. I'm 15 pounds lighter than I was when I was drinking. 
and I, I eat, <laughs> I eat healthy, but I treat myself sometimes. It's kind of crazy. So if that's, if health is an issue, um, gosh, it gives you such renewed energy and health. So anyway, back to that. I can drink if I want to, I choose not to. And that's what I love about what we do in our, in our project 90, you know, we don't use language around, um, alcohol such as, uh, alcoholic or sober or recovery, or I can't drink. Oh my gosh. I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type that if someone tells me I can't do something, hmm, watch me. Anyone else have that, have that attitude? I don't know if it's, I don't know where I get that from. Probably my dad, he was scrappy when he was younger. Uh, but does anyone else have that? You know, I don't like to be told what to do, but it feels so empowering. And that's what our members experience is they say, you know, yeah, I can drink. I choose not to. And we give you in our Project 90 program, we give you the skills to understand, number one, physiologically, what is a craving? What's going on? Second of all, the emotional coping skills to just kind of put a craving in its place. It's just a physiological thing that is a result of ingesting this addictive substance. It's going to happen. It happens to lab rats. It happens to humans. It just happens. It's just a substance. We also talk about society and again, how it's the only drug that we have to justify not using. Well, how's it presented? Is it, is it sold on a, on a, on a dirty street corner? No. Under the cover of darkness? No. It is brought out in a beautiful presentation in a beautiful bottle by someone who really, really wants your money and wants you to ingest it. But when you look at it and its effects on the brain and the body, it's the same stuff. Now, do they have attractively packaged cocaine? No. Crack? No. Opioids? No. Alcohol? Mm Mm-hmm. Now, why is that? That's because it makes people rich. It makes big alcohol, rich. It makes the waiter's tip increase exponentially. So of course he's going to say, would you like another drink? But when you break it down to what it is and what it does to our bodies, it's the same junk. So in our Project 90 program, we, again, we talk about what is alcohol as a substance. Why do we have these cravings? We talk about society and how it's pushed on us, how we are just inundated with alcohol messages and how to manage that. Because look, I've been where you are. So I'm not going to under, I'm not going to minimize it and say, oh, it's no big deal. Just go to a party and say, you're not drinking. Just you know you shouldn't drink anyway so why would you go to a, to a to a gathering and and want a drink well i totally get it of course you will in the beginning but that's where we come in that's where we are going to help you we are going to support you we are going to give you not only the understanding like i said about what is alcohol but we're also going to give you the tools to manage it to cope with it to kind of think it through and go oh yeah well there's that attractively packaged poison. Hmm. Yep. Oh, I bet that waiter wants me to drink it. It's going to increase his take home. Absolutely. We're going to help you understand that. And then again, this is not for us to tell you all what to do. We are simply here to provide the information and the coaching and the support that we all need when we're embarking on a huge change in our lives. Because even though we know that going alcohol free for 90 days or more is going to improve our health, it's not the easiest thing to do. And that's why no one should have to do this by themselves. You don't have to do this by yourself. And talking to people who have been there and yet have the training and certification to really help you is the best investment you can make in yourself. Because this is something that's going to carry over for the rest of your life. 
And there are a few things I can think of that have a return on in, on investment as much as giving up alcohol. You know, you can go on a diet, you can go vegan, you can run a marathon, and those could all benefit you in some measurable ways. You could lose weight, you could um, get a new wardrobe, you could get a a medal to wear after after running a race like that, and that's great. But let's look at the benefits of giving up alcohol, health wise, money wise. I don't know about you guys. How much are you guys spending on alcohol? I was spending quite a bit. Uh, I I was joking with James the other day. I said, when I stopped drinking, I would go to a restaurant. I had to double check my bill to make sure they had actually charged me for everything. And then I realized, wow, the reason it's so cheap is because I'm not drinking. So your wallet grows, your waistline shrinks. That right there is a a good motivator. Um, but let's talk about the, the intangible things that you're gaining. What are you gaining? What about waking up in the morning without regret? What about being able to carry through on your word to yourself and perhaps to others? You know, if your drinking is impacting your relationships, how about just waking up and knowing that you are living according to your own values? You're living in integrity. It's a pretty good feeling. That's a priceless feeling. I'll tell you that because there were a lot of mornings I woke up and said, I did it again. I wasn't going to do that. I was only going to have one glass of wine. Boy, being able to wake up and just face my day, number one, without a hangover. Number two, without having eaten all that crappy food the night before. Number three, with my bank account being bigger instead of depleted. Wow. That's a big motivator. So why is it so hard? Why don't we just all just do the right thing? It's like if you were allergic to strawberries, would you eat strawberries anymore? No, you'd stop eating strawberries. Why is it so hard? Goes back to my point about it's an addictive substance. Society wants us to do it. So it's completely natural that we have these cravings. Boy, I remember, uh, gosh, in college going out, people would smoke all over the place in restaurants. Well, I was born in 1970. People could smoke on airplanes. They could smoke in hospitals. Can you imagine? Isn't that crazy? I know. I like to think that we're kind of the uh, trailblazers with this whole movement. I think that It's going to take some time because of, of course, the big marketing, right? Like big tobacco, big sugar. Uh, You know, they don't like, they don't like their uh, bottom line being cut into. But I like to think that we are trailblazers, that we're just really looking, we're calling this out for what it is. Just like, like you said, Kyle, just like they did with tobacco, just like they did in with sugar, You know, like I said, I I studied nutrition and dietetics and the changes have been so slow with how labels are done. Um, You know, when I was in college, the way that people that that the marketers could hide uh, sugars and misrepresent themselves was astonishing. Now it's coming along, but it's still extreme. You almost need a college degree in dietetics to, to decipher a nutrition label. Isn't it funny that alcohol is an addictive substance? It's a class one carcinogen. And yet they don't put that on the label. I wonder what that's going to look like in five or 10 years. You know, are they going to say, hey, this is a highly addictive substance. Now all they say is, uh, you know, don't drink it if you're pregnant or driving. Duh. (laughs) But wouldn't it be interesting if it was just as common just like they have to put on a pack of cigarettes that it's that it causes cancer. What if they labeled alcohol for what it is? This is a class one carcinogen. This is linked to several types of breast cancer. This could make you be less productive at work. You might even lose your job. 
this could, this is going to um, take money from your bank account. This could make your kids look at you a little differently. You're not going to feel as confident at work because you're going to wake up foggy. Hmm. You're not going to be as present with your children because you're going to be thinking about the next drink instead of enjoying your time with them. What if it said that kind of stuff? Of course, that's not going to happen right now. But James and I do our bit to just raise awareness and help you guys, again, make informed choices. I also want you to know, you know, James and I are not cult leaders or anything. This is, um, we have no emotion about whatever choices people make. Those are theirs to make. That's the beautiful thing about being in this country, right? We have, we have the option to do what we want. Our job is to simply give you information and then make your own informed decision. I have plenty of friends who drink. That's their choice. I have friends who smoke, not many anymore, but a few. Okay, that's their choice. Don't stand close to me. I don't want my hair or clothes smelling like it, but that's all right. You know, and and that's why, you know, (laughs) again, you know, we are just here to present the information, but also to create a space where our members can be honest about what it's like. What's it like to go to your first party without alcohol? What's it like to talk to your friends when you're not drinking? What's it like to have a stressful day and think, oh, all I want is a drink. Guess what? You can say that with us. Because we've been there and we have the skills to help you get through it. I love the work I do. I love working with James. I love our community. We have an incredible group of professional, educated people. And, you know, there's no shame. There's no, there are no labels. There's nothing. It's just a bunch of really smart people getting together and talking about this issue and finding solutions so that life is so much better. So, as I said before, cravings are very natural. They're going to happen, especially in the beginning. When you have been feeding your body and brain a steady supply of alcohol, it's only natural that when you take it away, your body and brain are going to react. Why is that? Well, like I said earlier in the chat, our body is striving to return to homeostasis. Homeostasis is our body's wonderful gift of being able to regulate all the stuff that goes on from blood pressure to cortisol to serotonin, right? The feel good chemicals in our brain. When we take something away that has created a false elevated level of feel good, we're going to feel a little off. And our body and brain are going to wonder, where is my stuff? When that happens, my first suggestion is that you just acknowledge it. That you say, I am having a craving. And not have judgment around it. Not say, I know alcohol is bad for me. I know I shouldn't be doing this. Why am I thinking about it? Guess what that might do? That might make you want to drink more. We can't rely on willpower. So, like I said before, in Project 90, we help you with those things. We help you understand that this is just a physiological thing that's happening. Uh, It's not a reflection on who you are. It's not a reflection on your character or your strength and ability to follow through. So the first thing we do is we just observe it. We go, oh, I'm having a craving. We also come up with lots of good tips like, what could I do instead? Should I do anything? Should I just maybe chill out for a little bit and ride it out? Um, You know, as you go through this alcohol-free journey, we don't want you to be a hermit. You're not meant to stay home alone. We've all done plenty of staying home, right? It's time to get out back out and live a little. Um, We give you those tips. A craving, believe it or not, only lasts about 15 minutes. Can you believe that? 15 minutes. Wow. If you're anything like I was, those 15 minutes feel long. 
I've had four children. And sometimes I think cravings may have felt longer <laughs> than, than pregnancy or delivery. They can be intense. And again, it's not a reflection on who you are. This is just a physiological thing that's happening. You are ingesting this substance that gave you elevated levels in your brain and body. And now you're not. And your body is kind of whining at you. Totally normal. So there's plenty of things. You can also have a snack. You know, one thing I talk to my our members about is don't let yourself get too hungry. Now, that's not a free-for-all, not an excuse to go just raid the pantry. But don't let yourself get too hungry. I became very aware of that when I was giving up alcohol. You know, we can go into a bit of a drop in our blood blood sugar. And um, yeah, alcohol used to do the trick, right? Kind of gives you that little boost you need. Well, so would a banana. <laughs> so would perhaps a small serving of cheese and crackers, some olives, a sandwich, piece of pizza. I mean, hey, you're saving all these calories. Have the pizza. But oftentimes uh, we just need to be more in touch with what is really going on. Maybe we're craving something else. Maybe we're craving connection. That's been my experience as I myself was getting becoming alcohol free. And as I've been coaching with project 90, you know, what a lot of us are missing, especially after the year and something that we've all had, we're missing connection. We're missing authentic conversation. We're missing honest conversation. Um, You know, alcohol makes us a lot of promises. If it delivered on all those promises, we wouldn't be here on this chat. Right. So a good question to ask yourself if you're having a craving when you're having a craving, because it's probably going to happen, is what do I really need right now? I mean, that's a good question. Maybe ask yourself that right now. What do I need right now? Hmm. Do I need something to eat? Do I feel kind of isolated? Do I need connection? Uh, am I tired? Do I need to sort of reset? Do I need to get out into nature a little bit? Do I need to listen to some music that used to light me up when I was younger? Alcohol dims our ability to ask ourselves those questions because it gives us that quick boom. And then yeah, everything's fine. But if we could just take that little space between this part of our brain saying, we want to drink. And this part of our brain saying, well, maybe there's something else I need. If you can just pause it a little, sit with that mm, discomfort as you have a craving. And just say, you know, I wonder what I really want. If you're anything like me, I wanted, I wanted a little stress release. And if it had worked, I'd still be drinking. It didn't work, obviously. I'll give you the short, the the condensed version. (laughs) It didn't work. It doesn't work for any of us. That's why we all, you know, that's why so many of us show up here, but not everybody, you know? So again, kudos to you all for being here and just being curious and going, you know, alcohol is not delivering on its promises. Anything else on your mind? This is a weekend, you know, spring is springing many places around the country, around the world. Does this kind of make you want to drink more? Are you struggling on this Friday afternoon? Are you trying to think of other things to do? I talk to our members a lot in Project 90. I say, what did you used to like to do? What used to light you up? And it's shocking how many people have to really take some time to think about that. Wow, what did I like to do? Hmm, and I remember that when I gave up drinking. I thought, gosh, what did I like to do? And guess what? I like to do a million things that I'd kind of forgotten about. The stack of books that I have now, 
my podcast list, my music playlists, all these things that light me up. And guess what that does, you guys? It gives our brain that boost that it's looking for. I've recreated habits, rituals in my, I call it my mini bar. You know, I have a whole place in my in my kitchen where I have uh, all sorts of, you know, flavored seltzers and and uh, fresh fruit cut up that I put in there. I freeze, um, I freeze berries and ice cubes and I put that in my drink. But I have this whole ritual created in my kitchen. And like I said, it gives me that same light up that I used to have when I would open a bottle of wine. Isn't that crazy? I would have never believed that, but it works. And that's what's so beautiful to see at the end of 90 days when our members have put away the alcohol, gotten curious about what they used to like, what lights them up, what makes them feel good. Um, It's pretty amazing to see them approach life with such a new and fresh curiosity. And a lot of our members are in their 40s, 50s, 60s. Isn't that cool that there can still be so much curiosity? I mean, look at the life expectancy these days. You know, we're going to be around for a while, hopefully. <laughs> I like to think of this as, you know, I'm, I'm just getting started. So whatever habits you create today, forget about these habits that seem insurmountable with alcohol. Dig into a community, invest in yourself. If you don't have faith in yourself, we'll have it for you until you have it. Um, But invest in yourself and get curious. I mean, I'm 50 years old. Gosh, if I started this five years ago, wow, I'm going to be real. I mean, I've got my whole life ahead of me. I get to do this for a long time. I get to be curious about life. Whereas when I was drinking, alcohol made my world small. It's a really cool experience. I will say, I mean, this is one of the few communities where, again, we work with professionals, CEOs, people who, again, on the outside, everything looks awesome. We're high functioning. But there's that one darn thing that is keeping us small. Don't let anything, don't let a stupid, beautifully packaged poison keep you small. Invest in yourself. Realize that, yeah, you may have some some days where you're eh, a little uncomfortable. But like I said on on a call last week that I was coaching with a wonderful group such awesome people. I said, you know, sometimes life can be hard. Choose your hard. Would you rather deal with 15 minutes of a craving when you have an entire community, a team of coaches available to you that you can be completely transparent with and say, oh, I just came in from doing yard work or I just had an argument with someone and I just want to have a drink. There's that hard. And then you get through it and you wake up the next day and you have no alcohol in your system. And you're like, check, got that one done. And the next time it gets easier. Or would you rather continue on this repetitive treadmill going nowhere with it? And the same old, same old happens with alcohol and nothing changes. Alcohol is making the choices instead of you. Alcohol is telling you where to stay. Alcohol is telling you where to, how to think. Society, marketers who you're giving money to are telling you how to live. It's kind of a, it seems so simple, right? And I get that it, that it can be challenging. I get that maybe making that call, thinking about investing time and energy and resources into this can be a bit daunting. But just think, coming along on this Project 90 could mean that you never have to feel the way you felt the last time you woke up after drinking. You never have to feel that unless you choose to, but you're going to have a real choice. You are going to make the choices, not alcohol. 
not marketing. Something to think about. Does anyone have any final questions? I'm actually about to jump off because I am leading a group call in a few minutes. Anything else going on? I'm so glad you were here. I hope you will continue to explore this, set up a call to find out about our Project 90. I lead a lot of the calls. I love them. It's fantastic. We have incredible people in our community. And uh, we would love for you to check us out. Come join us. Like I said, what do you have to lose? You're going to save some money, a bunch of money. You're going to save a bunch of calories. You're going to live in alignment with who you really are. Be authentic. Be you. If you're feeling down on yourself, I used to. It's not who you really are. Alcohol dims us. It makes us say and do things that we wouldn't normally do. It's not who you really are. Give yourself 90 days. Give it a chance. I lead a lot of the calls. James does too. And uh, it would be an honor and a privilege to meet you guys. I hope you will join us. Uh, I think, I believe there's one more day. Uh, Again, James wasn't able to make it here, but I am so happy and honored that I was able to chat with you all. And I hope you will continue to connect with us. And like I said, invest in yourself. You are worth it. Have a wonderful Friday and hopefully a beautiful spring weekend. Take care all. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.